UK's Bodie McBoatface submarine will soon begin its first voyage. The yellow submarine named Bodie McBoatface will embark on its first voyage this week. The silly name was in fact chosen by the public for the UK's new polar research ship, but the British government didn't appreciate the humor. Bodie McBoatface will leave Punta Arenas, Chile, aboard British polar ship RRS James Clark Ross, for the Southern Ocean on March 17th. The ship will release the submarine in a gap in a ridge known as Orkney Passage. Bodie McBoatface is a new type of autonomous submersible that can descend to a depth of 6,000 meters and can travel under ice. It can transmit data back to its mothership via a radio link. The submarine will map the circulation of deep water, known as the Great Ocean Conveyor, which plays a critical role in regulating our climate system. The British government named the new polar research ship as the RRS Sir David Attenborough, after the famous naturalist and broadcaster. The ship is expected to be completed by 2019. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Interested in the ocean and climate change? We got more for you. Microsoft plans underwater data centers. Data center servers are wonderful things. They make the world go round. But keeping them cool enough to function really, really turns up the electricity bill. It's because of this that Microsoft is looking at placing its servers underwater. Last year, Microsoft sent a server inside a steel hull 30 feet below the Pacific Ocean. Along with pressurized nitrogen to cool computer chips, the temperature at the ocean floor helped keep the server cool. The experiment ran for 105 days between August and November of 2015. That hull was named Leona Philpot after a character from the Halo video game series. According to Microsoft, last year's experiment was powered by a land-based power grid, but they hope to develop other power sources. The company believes that renewable resources such as tidal energy could power underwater data centers. Microsoft eventually hopes to develop underwater data centers with a two-decade lifespan, deployed over five-year periods where computer hardware is replaced at the end of each deployment. The company is working on the next phase of the research, which they say includes a vessel that is quadruple the size of this one and will hold 20 times as much compute power. But what about the sea life, some of you may be asking? Funnily enough, Microsoft says they began to inhabit the system. Bottlenose dolphins are inspiring a new sonar detector designed to improve underwater exploration. Scottish engineers have decoded the marine mammals' renowned subsea detection capabilities. Bottlenose dolphins have um, the most advanced sonar that there is. It's um, the result of millions of years of evolution. They can outperform all the technological solutions which we have. The US Navy has used them for a number of years for finding mines. The sensor was created by developing man-made signals that use the same frequency ranges and sound structures as dolphins. The prototype can detect underwater objects and hear what's inside them. So we've got two transducers on each side of our vehicle, a transmitter and a receiver, and the electronics sends the signal down to the transducer. It has to be a very high voltage signal. So we, with the computer, have a typical computer level signal. It gets amplified up to several hundred volts to drive the transducer and put this, this dolphin-like signal into the water. The sensor could be vital for offshore pipelines in harsh environments, helping experts find blockages and predict the appearance of cracks single ships could potentially conduct multiple surveys at once. It could also help ecologists track the health of marine environment and map the seafloor. Global warming is killing our oceans. A new study predicts that within 15 to 20 years, human-caused deoxygenation will be felt across the world's oceans. With climate change warming seawaters, oxygen levels in the world's oceans are beginning to drop, Surface water with higher temperatures absorb less oxygen. Such surface water is also more buoyant, so oxygen is less likely to make it into deeper water. The resulting conditions are dangerous to marine ecosystems, which depend on oxygen for survival. 
With the threat already underway, changes in the southern Indian Ocean and parts of the Pacific and Atlantic will be felt as early as 2030. Oceans in eastern Africa, Australia and Southeast Asia, however, won't feel the impact until the next century. Worsening the effects of deoxygenation is an increase in carbon dioxide, causing oceans to be more acidic and less habitable. Researchers say carbon emissions must be reduced if we want to slow the oxygen loss. But monitoring and understanding where the oxygen levels are dipping and how it's impacting our waters is also key. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. The end of the last ice age might have been due to carbon dioxide. A recent study by the University of Southampton suggests that carbon dioxide released from the ocean helped end the last ice age. There's more carbon at lower depths in the ocean because of high amounts of detritus in the calcium carbonate shells of animals found at lower depths. According to research, upwellings probably occurred in the southern Atlantic Ocean and the eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean. Upwellings, which occur when offshore winds push surface water away from the landmass, brings cold, carbon-rich waters to the surface. Carbon is released into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide absorbs solar energy and this causes the atmosphere to heat up. The warming atmosphere causes glaciers to melt. The warming atmosphere also warms the oceans. As oceans warm, they are less able to absorb carbon dioxide and this causes a rise of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Changes in the ocean's carbon storage capabilities continues to be a factor in atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration variations.